So a student asked on one of my recent YouTube clips about doing a question on uh, this immunodeficiency stuff. Okay, I was about to just say the fucking answer, which would defeat the whole purpose of you guys even watching this, but I'll keep this clip concise, don't worry. The point is, this stuff very fucking high yield for step one, and then for step two for pediatrics, this stuff also shows up, okay, in a step one level of detail. How about I start the fucking question? How does that sound? Okay, before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Help grow this channel. Share with one of your friends prepping for your simile. Help bring awareness to this channel. Hit the like button. Hit the bell. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. And find me on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. The links are down below. Now we've got a four-year-old girl. She's got uh, an itchy cutaneous papular rash uh, on her inner thighs. She had a similar rash uh, six months ago. KOH prep of the lesions shows pseudohyphae and single budding yeast. Classic description for candida, high yield for USMLE. And then I go on to just say anyway that skin antigen testing is performed and shows normal response to candida protein extract, which means the diagnosis is not chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis in that case. Patients will get recurrent candidal infections since childhood, and skin antigen testing shows energy to candidal proteins. So it's not chronic muco mucocutaneous candidiasis. If it were the case, the answer would be deficiency of cell-mediated immunity. Okay, it's not the answer in this case, but I'm just telling you tangentially because it's high yield. If you get a question and it's chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis, the answer is going to be deficiency of cell mediated immunity. It's a T cell defect. Okay. In this case, not a diagnosis. A nitro blue tetrazoleum assay reveals a blue color. This is a normal response. Okay. Blue color. This means our diagnosis is not chronic granulomatous disease, AKA NAD pH oxidase deficiency. We would not get a blue color. We'd get a yellow color. It's worth noting that as of NBME 15 for step one offline exam. Okay. Uh, you need to know that the dihydrorhodamine test is actually the updated diagnostic modality for NADPH oxidase deficiency. Uh, on NBME 15, I believe it was 15, it could be 16, but uh, they had a tetra, tetrazoleum blue assay and dihydrorhodamine test as two separate answers for NADPH oxidase deficiency, and the answer is dihydrorhodamine test, okay? So the point is, it's not CGD here. I should, <clears throat> so many points I can make, but uh, there's also been a uh, discussion before how uh, CGD is X-linked recessive. So you can make a point, you say, well, it's a girl, it's not going to be CGD anyway. There's a CGD question floating around where it's actually a girl, okay? And if you look on Wikipedia, uh, they'll tell you it can be autosomal recessive. So don't memorize any particular inheritance pattern for CGD. It can be a girl. Let's just continue. Uh, we're going to look at our answers sequentially here. Deficiency of mucosal immunoglobulin, wrong fucking answer. This refers to IgA deficiency, okay? So mucosal immunoglobulin, IgA, all right? And this would classically be a teenager or older who's had recurrent sinopulmonary infections, okay? Recurrent sinusitis, recurrent pneumonia. They can mention reactive airway disease, uh, A to P, okay? So asthma, uh, eczema in the summer, uh, rhinoconjunctivitis in the spring, they can give you other autoimmune diseases in association with the IgA deficiency like vitiligo or uh, pernicious anemia, history of giardia, uh, history of anaphylaxis of blood transfusion. That's IgA deficiency. It's not the case here. Okay. Uh, deficiency, deficiency of cell mediated immunity. We said is the wrong answer. It's not chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. This is also the answer for Wiscott-Aldrich syndrome. That's X-linked recessive. It's going to be a boy who has a triad of eczematoid skin lesions and, uh, immunodeficiency and thrombocytopenia, okay, like nosebleeds or petechiae, and also DeGeorge syndrome, okay, T-cell deficiency. Uh, those are classic answers or classic diagnoses for cell-mediated immunity, meaning T-cells are involved, okay, in the immune response. And we're not getting antibody production specifically. That would be humoral immunity. Choice C, impaired leukocyte adhesion, wrong fucking answer. This refers to leukocyte adhesion deficiency, LAD, okay? I mean, deficiency of LFA1, CD18 integrin. They can tell you delayed separation of umbilical cord, very buzzy descriptor. They don't have to tell you that. They can say absent pus. They can say decreased neutrophils in the skin with infection. Uh, but uh, patients will classically um, have recurrent infections, skin infections without pus and they can mention the, the delayed separation of umbilical cord, okay, as I just discussed. Um, choice D, inability to produce superoxide. 
this is wrong answer. This refers to CGD. Okay, so in the respiratory burst, we've got uh, molecular oxygen via NADPH oxidase produces superoxide. Okay, it's the first step in the respiratory burst. And then superoxide via superoxide dismutase will go to hydrogen peroxide. And then hydrogen peroxide via myeloperoxidase will go to hydroxyl halide radicals, which is bleach. Okay, now the Correct diagnosis here is choice E, reduction in hydroxyl halide radicals. This is myeloperoxidase deficiency. It's classically going to present with uh, candidal infections, okay? Now, if you look at the literature, they'll say most patients are actually asymptomatic. If you do get a presentation, they'll tell you recurrent candidal infections. They do not have susceptibility to catalase-positive organisms the same way that CGD patients do, okay? And they're going to have a nor in myeloperoxidase deficiency, okay? They're going to have a normal... Uh, tetrazoleum blue assay. Now, U.S. Simile really wants you to know that detail, okay? Myeloperoxidase deficiency and production of hydroxyl halide radicals is impaired, okay? For CGD, in contrast, uh, susceptibility to catalase positive organisms, there's different mnemonics people will memorize, okay? But uh, there's, two main, there's two main vignettes you're going to get for CGD in terms of presentations. About half maybe half to 65% will give you just recurrent staph infections, okay? The other uh, fraction will be uh, catalase, more specific catalase positive organisms such as uh, Candida, E. coli, uh, serratia, okay? Serratia sepsis is a big one, and uh, pseudomonas, okay? So there's different catalase positive organisms. But we can make this an extended clip, but just when we're talking about really real quick differentiating CGD for myeloperoxidase deficiency, in CGD, we're going to have a yellow nitro blue tetrazoleum assay, okay? Uh, and the dihydrorhodamine test will be abnormal. And we're going to have catalase positive organism susceptibility, whereas with myeloperoxidase deficiency, we're going to have inability to produce hydroxyl halide radicals. There's no particular susceptibility to catalase positive organisms. They can get uh, recurrent candidal infections if they do show up symptomatically. Um, and they will have a normal skin testing for the antigen to candida, okay? Whereas if you have energy to candida, it's chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis deficiency of cell-mediated immunity. Okay, so this can be an extended clip. We could talk for 26 minutes about all this stuff, give you guys a uh, nice detail. However, I know that uh, many of you want a shorter clip. Okay, so you know the deal. I'm going to continue making more questions, making more content, uh, putting out different YouTube clips. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.